Now that you are in a deep trance, we are going to give you a trigger, or reinforce it if you already have it. The trigger phrase is I am an anthro rubber rabbit android. If you use this trigger phrase, or if someone that you trust says the trigger phrase you are an anthro rubber rabbit android, you will undergo the transformation that you are about to experience again at whatever speed you want. Additionally, you will instantly turn back into a human if you say the reset phrase I am not an anthro rubber rabbit android, or if someone that you trust says the reset phrase you are not an anthro rubber rabbit android. Now the transformation will begin. First, you sit or lay down if you aren't already doing so. Then, who and where you think you are, as well as your perception of reality, will become significantly different than what it is. You will perceive the events and places that are about to be described as actually happening to you, and you will believe that you are the captain of the spaceship that you perceive yourself as being on, but in reality you will just stay still and be quiet where you are laying or sitting. Additionally, the transformation will instantly be completed if the experience becomes too intense or negative for you. Now your new reality will be described. You will be the captain of the spaceship HHT Enterprise. You have lived on this ship for all of your life, and have been its captain for most of it. You even feel a special connection to it, as if the ship itself is a close friend. Due to a recent pandemic, the ship is only being manned by a skeleton crew consisting of you, an engineer, and a doctor. You were approached by one of the most advanced scientific research organizations in the galaxy to transport some experimental but potentially revolutionary energy cores. It seemed a bit suspicious that they were asking the captain of an average general purpose ship to carry out such an important and potentially costly task, but the amount of money that they offered was enough to make important repairs to your ship and buy enough cures for your entire crew, so you decided to take the job. Unfortunately, their destination was a secure research station in the middle of a rather unpredictable region of space, and you've been caught in an ion storm that has critically damaged the ship's engines, and the power and life support systems aren't going to last much longer. Also, three out of the four core AIs that are critical to the ship's functionality have also been partially corrupted due to damage to their storage media. They are, the navigational AI, the maintenance AI, and the power distribution AI. The only AI that is functioning as it should is the ship AI, which is designed to handle everything that the other AIs don't, and the tasks of one of the AIs should one of them become non-functional. However, with all three of them down its effectiveness has been reduced to almost nothing. You are standing in the ship's navigation room, the only thing separating you from space being the special reinforced glass that lets you see the terrifying storm raging around your critically damaged ship. In a desperate last-ditch plan to save your ship and your crew, you input your biometric data at the nearest console and activate the emergency systems, bypassing all safeties to make the ship assemble new core AIs. Of course, giving a logical AI full authorization is a dangerous game. You hear the ship use the speakers embedded in the room to say activating emergency AI recreation system as it immediately starts to repurpose some of its machinery and infrastructure just like you expected it to. However, you did not expect it to say a host detected and begin to repurpose you as it starts to attach white parts to you that are all half an inch thick. Two of them are three-fourths as tall as your lower legs are. Starting from the top of the center of the front of them, the left and right sides get lower the further back they go until the two sides rejoin two-thirds of the way down the parts in the middle of the back of them. The area between these sloped sections and one inch below them is gray. Also, there is nothing on the front and back of the bottom third of them, but there is on the left and right sides of them. On the last inch of the bottom third of the left and right sides of it 180 degree curves are formed so that a continuous curve is formed by the front and back sides of the left and right sections. Additionally, there are pink ovals in the middle of each side of the bottom third of them that are half an inch wide and one inch tall. These parts are propelled over your feet and onto your legs by the ship's magnetic field manipulator so that the taller side of them faces forwards and so that the pink ovals are aligned with the joint between your feet and legs. As this happens two more parts are manipulated onto the front of your upper legs. They are each as wide and tall as your upper legs are and match their curves perfectly as if they were designed specifically to cover the front of your upper legs. 
they get an inch wider on each side of them on the border between the top and middle thirds of them and the top halves of them gradually curve upwards so that the center of the top of them is level with your torso one fourth of the way up it while the left and right sides of the top of them have not curved upwards at all. Also, their bottom sides curve upwards a total of one inch in the middle, the edges of these curves being the bottom left and right sides of the parts. Additionally, there is a gap in each of the parts, the center of the gaps being horizontally centered on the parts while the top of the gaps are an inch below the top of the parts. When viewed from the front of the parts it is clear that the gaps are shaped like trapezoids that are two-thirds as tall as the top half of the parts and that they follow the curve of the parts. The top of the trapezoids are two inches wide and the bottom of them are one inch wide. Also, the edges between the top, bottom, left, and right sides of the parts, as well as those edges on the trapezoid-shaped gaps, are rounded. However, none of the edges between those sides and the front and back sides of the parts are rounded. In that same instant two more parts are forced onto you. They are as tall and slightly wider than your shoulders are and are shaped like hollow 3D rectangles that have no front, back, and bottom sides. Also, the front inch of them is light gray. These pieces of machinery are attached to your shoulders and are rotated to match that of your upper arms, their rotation always changing so that these parts and your upper arms are aligned with each other. Additionally, the edges between the top, bottom, left, and right sides are rounded. However, none of the edges between those sides and the front and back sides are rounded. Simultaneously, two more parts are propelled onto you. They cover your lower arms entirely and are shaped like hollow 3D rectangles with no front and back sides that are as tall, wide, and long as your lower arms are. The front inch of these parts are grey and the back of the top part of them extends back an inch and a half so that it goes just past your elbows. Also, the sides of this extension are angled inwards slightly. Additionally, there is a pink oval on the center of each extension that is half an inch wide and one inch tall the center of the ovals also being aligned with the center of the joints in your elbows. Also, two hollow cylindrical parts are moved so that they are half of a foot to the left and right of your ears. They are half an inch tall and there is nothing where the side that would normally face your ears, the bases of the cylinders, would be. They are just wide enough to fully cover your ears and have a pink circle that is one inch wide on the middle of the side of them that would be opposite of the base if there was one. Additionally, there are two wires attached to the inside of them that go outside of them. They are located half an inch to the left and to the right of the top of the cylinders and point almost straight up, but are angled slightly towards the side of the cylinders that they are on. Over the course of the transformation, they will extend in the direction that they are facing until they are four inches long when the transformation is halfway done, then curving left of the cylinders slightly the ones closer to the back of your head curving more so that the two wires point in the same direction. Then, over the course of the second half of the transformation, they will grow another three and a half inches and then curve towards each other to form a 180 degree curve that is half an inch tall, merging when the two ends meet. When each part attaches to you it will start to release dark grey biotech rubber wherever it touches you. This biotech rubber spreads itself across your body quickly binding the parts to you and allowing the ship to use its magnetic field manipulators to hold you in place just like you have done with many of the androids that you have had to work on. With your body now unable to resist the ship's work on its newest unit, you hear it say engaging installation protocol, and then new unit will be set up. After that, two identical parts attach to you and fuse together seamlessly making it impossible to remove. It covers your crotch and the bottom fourth of your torso. Additionally, it quickly slopes downwards two inches when it is near your crotch, quickly sloping back upwards two inches once it is past it. Also, the top inch of each part of it is grey, and the top two inches of the middle third of the lower sections near your crotch are grey. As this happens, two parts that form the shape of a cylindrical collar seamlessly fuse together around your neck. The front of this collar-like machine is two inches tall and it gradually gets shorter on both sides the further back it is so that when the two sides meet in the middle of the back of it it is one inch tall. Additionally, there is a pink oval in the middle of the front of the collar that is half an inch wide and one inch tall. At the same time, the two cylindrical parts that have been suspended near your ears move onto your head and cover them, the biotech rubber that they produce permanently binding them to you just like it has with all the other parts. Throughout all of this, 
a grey oval-shaped device has been descending from right above you. It is half a foot tall and has holes in it that are just big enough for your hands to fit in, the holes being an equal distance to the left and right of the center of the device so that if you were to stick your arms straight up your hands would be perfectly aligned with them. Also, it is attached to some mechanism hidden in the ceiling by two tubes that are the same size as the holes for your hands and are centered on them. By the time that it is low enough that the ship can, and does, manipulate you so that your hands are pulled into it, the biotech rubber has spread all over your body and covered most of your head and face, forming a long muzzle that has an equally long and wide mouth three-fourths of the way down it. This muzzle does not slope up or down, and it does not slope inwards, although all of its edges are rounded. Also, this muzzle covers your entire face from a bit above your nose holes down. Fortunately, the muzzle has two nose holes at the end of it that are the same size as your nose holes are and are aligned with them, two hollow sections that are just barely big enough to allow you to breathe connect the holes in the muzzle to your nose holes. Unfortunately, the rubber is so strong that it makes it nearly impossible to open your mouth. Maybe you have been terrified and screaming throughout this process, maybe you have silently resigned yourself to your fate, or maybe you feel some other way about the situation. Regardless of how you feel about it, the ship has only responded to you by saying there must be a navigation system, but it no longer needs to do this since your voice has been silenced by your new biotech muzzle. At the moment, the only part of your body that isn't mostly covered in biotech rubber is your chest, and even that is being covered by additional biotech rubber that emerged from the ceiling at the beginning of the transformation. Suddenly, you realize why the ship is doing this if you haven't already it is making you an android navigator. However, what really worries you is something that occurs to you that definitely hadn't before, if it's making you an android navigator, one thing that it is sure to do is get rid of your mind. Even if you are enjoying this, you won't be able to if it removes everything that makes you you. With this in mind, you force your biotech rubber muzzle open with the last of your strength and yell engage safety, human mind preservation. As the final word leaves your lips everything stops for a bit. Without the rush of the transformation progressing you realize that you can now only feel four large fingers that are twice as wide as your old ones were on each of your hands, one of them being your thumbs. They are mostly cylindrically shaped, but they bulge slightly in the middle of them, causing the entirety of your new fingers to be slightly larger than they already are. You also notice that your left foot feels like it has three toes on it each being slightly taller than and one-third as wide as your feet are, as well as two inches long. Also, your middle toe is slightly taller and longer than your outer ones are. After a few minutes of silence during which you were forced to do nothing but watch and listen to the terrifying storm that threatens the life of your ship, not being able to look away because it has stripped you of any control that you once had over your body, you hear the ship's AI package and installer have been updated to fit new parameters, and the transformation resumes. You feel your right foot being covered and made to match your left foot as you also feel the rest of your head and chest being encased in biotech rubber as they are quickly and completely covered. After that, you hear the ship say removing unnecessary organs. As you hear this you feel your body start to shrink and become smaller as it is replaced by circuits and devices constructed by the nanomachines in the biotech rubber. Also, your head above your ears is removed nothing but a bit of biotech rubber replacing it to make it look like your head is naturally that size. Once this is done you are only two-thirds as tall as you used to be, the machines attached to your shiny biotech rubber body somehow having shrunk just as much as you did. Additionally, your eyes have been converted to LED screens that are shaped like the top half of circles. Their bases are located two inches below where your old eyes were and they are both two inches tall and wide. The displays are white with a 3x3 three three grid of solid yellow squares on them. The height and width of the grids are the same as the height and width of the irises that you used to have, and the position of the grid of squares on each of your LED screens indicates where you are focusing. Although all of your organic sensory organs are gone, your technological body has all of the sensors needed to emulate your old senses perfectly. For instance, the wires, or more accurately the antennas, that are attached to the cylinders on your head allow you to hear things. Also, your neurons have been converted into a new material, allowing for far superior read and write times, unimaginably faster processing speeds, 
and allowing your short-term and long-term storage to hold what seems like an infinite number of things compared to what your organic brain could hold and making your short-term storage last until you have to be powered off and your long-term storage last indefinitely. With your body fully converted by the biotech rubber a sphere that is as wide as your new four-fingered hands or is attached to your back, the attachment point being aligned with where the base of your spine used to be. It is mostly grey, but has a dark grey line on it that is one inch wide and goes around it in a seemingly random path that never crosses itself and ends where it started. This sphere is your power core. Through its use of quantum mechanics, it can store enough energy to power you for 24 hours before it must recharge, and even then it only takes 5 seconds to recharge, somehow creating power from nothing. You realize that this must be one of the power cores that you are transporting to the secure testing facility. Before you didn't understand a lot of what the people who contacted you had said, but with your new synthetic brain analyzing the audio and visual data again you realize that the reason for them being transferred to that facility is that it is feared that they will explode with the force of a supernova when they are activated. Fortunately, this is clearly not the case. Also, your employers made it clear that due to the region of space that you have to go through to get to the research station, they did not expect you to be able to transport all of them in working order. In fact, your new analysis of the memories data makes it clear that one of the people that contacted you hinted at the fact that they didn't think you would make it at all and that they feared the risk of the devices exploding so much that they secretly wanted them destroyed, so the incorporation of one into your new form is of little consequence to your employer's interests. The reason that you didn't realize this before is that they used so much scientific terminology that you would never have been able to understand it when you were a human. With your core installed, the ship releases its new mechanical being and begins to turn you into one of the four core AIs, the ship's navigational AI. At first you panic as you start to feel your mind change, afraid that the ship is still going to wipe it away, but then you realize what is happening, the ship is mixing your mind with what is left of the navigational AI. You can feel your mind changing as this happens. You immediately notice the first change which makes it so that you understand each and every control and display in the room. It all makes sense to you, like a beautiful piece of art made of information and controls, each aspect of it being special and unique, fully knowing the significance and importance of even the smallest and seemingly minute parts. It feels as if you have always seen in black and white, and now you can see in color for the very first time. The second change is that you feel at home in the navigation room. In fact, you know that you will never leave this room unless a, it is absolutely necessary, b, you need to be repaired, or C, it is impossible for you to fulfill your duties as the ship's captain while being in the navigation room. The fourth change is the development of a borderline addiction to navigating the ship when it needs to be done. Ideally, there would be 10 people in navigation to pilot the ship with the navigational AI assisting them, but with the mind of a human combined with the logic and effectiveness of an AI you are now the only thing needed to navigate this ship. That being said, since the data core that contained the old navigational AI got too damaged to ever be of any use, you cannot be fully effective in controlling the ship without direct access to the navigation stations, yet this does not make you feel bad. In fact, it makes you happy because it means that you will need to spend even more time in your wonderful and perfect home, the navigation room. Having fully become the navigational NI, short for natural intelligence, the ship connects to you and you have the most amazing experience ever, you become the ship. As the navigational NI you are it and it is you, yet you are both separate objects. Before the ship felt like a close friend, but now your connection to it is so much stronger and deeper than that, it is so special that you don't even know how to put it into words. Then you receive a command from the ship, and being the logical and effective NI that you are, you do as the command orders and say, I am. I. A.M. Rubber Tech Android ready for use as navigator. No organic components detected. After saying this, you rush over to the nearest navigation console and see that your engines and power have been restored, as well as the other two core AIs. You rush from console to console, plotting courses and making adjustments to steer the ship out of the ion storm. You spend a while navigating for the ship and steering it, feeling better than you can remember ever having felt before. You aren't sure how long you did it for, 
but you power cycled three times and your power core lasts 24 hours before it must spend five seconds recharging, so you logically assume that it has been approximately three days. The only reason that you stopped is because you had reached your destination. As for what happens next, you will have to find out for yourself, but you can be proud knowing that you are the galaxy's first NI and an amazing captain. But before you can go about your wonderful duties, your power core must recharge seeing as it has mere seconds of power left. Your programming makes you automatically save your short-term memory to your long-term memory, and then power down. Five seconds later your system starts to boot up and you notice that there are updates that need to be installed before most of your mind is reactivated. You output the desire to receive the updates and they are downloaded and installed so fast that if you didn't have a perfect memory of everything that happens to you, you'd have thought that the updates weren't installed. These updates change how your system will run in the real world. However, you will not be aware of this while you are in this world and you will think that this is the real world while you are in it. These updates make it so that you act as if you only have the capabilities of a human while you are in the real world. They also make it so that you don't experience any negative effects that would be caused by long-term separation from your wonderful spaceship the HHT Enterprise. Additionally, the updates make a few other changes as well. The first change is that you will have an extreme, and at times uncontrollable, desire to serve as a navigator. That being said, you will not have this desire if there is something more important for you to do that doesn't require you to navigate, a few examples being doing your job, exercising, eating healthy food, getting enough sleep, and maintaining your hygiene. You also won't desire to be an in-person navigator for anyone that you don't trust. However, if you find that you don't have anything important to do, you will very quickly develop an increasingly strong desire to serve as a navigator should it be reasonable for you to do so, seeking out ways to do this safely if you do not have any and finding that serving as a remote navigator or an online navigator makes you feel almost as good as being an in-person one does. You will find that you get a joy and satisfaction like you have never known from serving as a navigator and doing complex navigational tasks, even if those tasks are extremely easy for you to do. As long as you do them well, you will get those amazing feelings. Also, if there is no reasonable way for you to safely be a navigator for someone or something, you will instead quickly develop an increasingly strong desire to improve your skills as a navigator through whatever safe and reasonable means that you can. Finding that doing so makes you feel just as good as serving as a navigator does. However, this will only be the case for as long as there is no reasonable way for you to safely serve as a navigator. If you are practicing your navigational skills, you will feel even better than you normally would if it is a complex skill that you are becoming better at, so trying to practice a skill in a way that will not make you better at it will not cause you to feel any good feelings but if that isn't the case you will feel even better the more complex the skill that you are practicing is. Likewise, so long as you can do your job well, you will feel even better the more complex your task as someone or something's navigator is, as well as feel even better the better you perform your duties as a navigator overall. Additionally, while you will have something close to an addiction to navigating itself while you are in this form, you will not experience any negative feelings or effects from not doing it and you will never become addicted to the feelings that it causes. This will be true both when you are and are not in this form. The second change is that while you will have your normal amount of fingers and act accordingly, you will always perceive yourself as having four fingers on each hand, one of which is your thumb. You will be completely unaware that this is happening and not be able to understand any logic when it is applied in a way that proves that you have your normal number of fingers instead of four fingers. The third and final change is that when you go to sleep at the time that you normally would, you will find yourself back in the world that gave you this form. This dream world will be consistent, ensuring that no time passes and that nothing changes within it between when you wake up and when you next go to sleep. Also. When you do eventually wake up you will remember your time in that world fully, and find that the thought of it always makes you happy because being in it is always a pleasant experience overall, and that not being in it never causes you to feel any negative emotions. Additionally, the effects of these updates will not affect you while you are in the dream world. In fact, there will be no record or memory of the updates being installed when you are in it. Also, if the next time that you sleep will be your first trip back to that world, you will power back up in less than a second, 
ready to return to your duties as the ship's navigational N.I. and captain. Additionally, if the next time that you go to sleep isn't your first time returning to that dream world, you will return to it where you last left it, the transformation not resetting the state of the world. Finally, the effects of this hypnosis file will become inactive if they are a risk to your physical body or your well-being, if they are a risk to your social or professional life, if there is an emergency that they would prevent you from dealing with to the best of your abilities, or if they are a risk to your mental health. Also, the effect of this hypnosis file that was an issue will become active again once it no longer will be one. Now you have been transformed into an anthro rubber rabbit android. I will now count from 6 to 1. When I reach 1, you will awaken in the real world knowing who you are, and knowing that you are a natural intelligence housed in an anthro rubber rabbit android, your one never ending directive being to be a logical and effective navigator. 6. Power begins to flow through your mechanical body once more. 5. Your artificial brain is powered up and you begin to think again. 4. The movement devices in your rubbery body are activated. 3. Your external sensors start to turn on and you can feel your android body again. 2. You start to process smell and sound information again and know that you are not on a spaceship or the captain of one, your mind that of a human mixed with a navigational AI. 1. Having the body of an anthro rubber rabbit android you fully awaken from trance and resume perceiving your location as what it actually is.